You don't want to see me anymore. You can't listen to me laugh out loud. You don't want to see me dance. You can't even take the chance that it might reflect on you. That's from Hold Me In Your Heart by Cindy Lauper. When I was growing up, my friends plastered their walls with posters of David Cassidy and the Osmond Brothers, and so did I. But secretly, I wanted to be looking at posters of Cher and Karen Carpenter. The southern town, teeny southern town I grew up in was a wonderful place to grow up. But there was this unspoken expectation for conformity. When we reached adolescence, my friends would huddle and talk about their latest crushes, and I would join in. I so wanted to be normal. Even my younger siblings somehow got this magic dust sprinkled on them that missed me. I played the game really well. I've got prom pictures from three different years to prove it with really good looking guys. But it was just that playing the game. I not only laughed at gay jokes, I told them. I preached against the sin of homosexuality and eventually I became so depressed I was hospitalized for a year in my mid-twenties. So eventually I made a choice, not that choice. I chose to be authentic. I chose to be real. I chose to be who I was born to be. Joseph Campbell wrote, the privilege of a lifetime is being oneself. And today I stand before you as a proud, totally myself bag, a beautifully accepted gay human. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something that I know is not easy. I mean, I want to ask you to put aside any of your beliefs that you bring to the table just for a few minutes, just for a few. In the words of Henry David Thoreau, is there any greater miracle than the ability to see through one's eyes for just an instant. instant. I would imagine just mentioning the word gay has already caused some people to tune out. And I need for you to hear that I get it. But guys, there's too much at stake. I just ask that you sit and listen to my story and my journey and what I've learned. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer plus individuals have existed throughout history. In fact, our own indigenous Native Americans revered them. They held them in high esteem. They called them two-spirit people. They went to them for wisdom, the androgynous, the feminine men, and the masculine women. Now, I didn't grow up in a culture like that. I just felt so alone. I know I couldn't have been the only one, but it sure felt that way. Well, today I teach high school, and this generation of young people inspires me in a way no other ever has. And the reason I say that is they have this ability to accept people where they are. They take you, and they accept it. And I see it most often play out with gender and sexuality differences. They inspire me daily, but it doesn't mean they have it easy. In fact, according to the Trevor Project, suicide is the second leading cause of death among all teenagers today. And the LGBTQ plus population is four to six times higher. Four to six times. I often hear adults say, it's just a phase, they'll get over it, this gay, lesbian stuff. Maybe. I mean, I've never seen anyone my age rock the goth look, right? But my teenagers certainly do. Then for some of us, it's not a phase. But guys, so what? Because if we accept our most vulnerable teens where they are as who they are today, they will remember that forever. And if we reject them for the very same things, they will remember that forever too. I personally don't think anyone is expendable. So is changing a pronoun or two worth saving a life? 
You know what I believe in? I believe in radical acceptance. The culture of my classroom is one of that type of acceptance, that type of connection. I often hear my students say, everyone belongs here with no judgment. A group of my students formed a gay sexuality alliance. There's not much quite as magical and affirming as seeing a group of 40 to 50 teenagers in a room connecting on a level they never imagined possible. There's a line in the Cindy Lauper song that really speaks to me, besides the ones I just sang. You missed out on the best part of me, the part that made me who I am today. I'm not asking you to change your values. I'm just asking you to make a choice. It all does boil down to choices. And I'm not, again, referring to the choice to be by whatever. Here's the choice I'd like for you to think about. Ask yourself these three questions. Do I choose kindness over intolerance? Do I choose acceptance over judgment? Do I choose validation over rejection? I vividly remember those dark, dark days when the thought of living hidden was harder for me than the thought of dying. In the darkest night of my soul, when I had once again been hospitalized because I was a threat to my own life, someone looked at me and said, you are perfectly lovable. The next day, I told my therapist about it. And she said, well, duh, Lisa. <laughs> Internally, I felt the change are coming. I felt it change inside of me that moment. And you know what? There are a lot of me's out there that need someone to listen, to care, and to accept them right where they are. On my watch, no one will ever feel the emptiness that comes from feeling as if one's own true self has to be hidden or it's somehow just not good enough. What do you choose? I choose love with no strings attached. <laughs>